to keep the ball rolling let me continue the discussion the topic assigned to me is on responsive teaching strategies so based on studies it shows that the following were considered as responsive teaching strategies first among others is the heart strategy this strategy is an acronym of the following steps to be undertaken. First step is H, which means we have to hear what the student is saying. Just like in CI, we must conduct the voice of the customers to know our learners better. Second is E, empathize with the student's situation. To empathize is to understand our learners by putting ourselves in their shoes. We must feel in the context of how the learners are feeling. Third is to assess what the students' needs are. We must assess our learners' needs. We must know who lag behind reading. How many are frustration readers? In math, how many are incapable of the basic operations? We must also know how are they coping from the different learning modalities we are using. By then, we can move on to step 4 or realign your strategies. You can adjust your strategies so that it can respond to the needs of our learners. In doing so, we may refer to the school resources. Last step is to tell the appropriate person regarding the problem. As Mama Mara said, we should avoid bragging the problem we encountered in the social media and instead direct it to the proper authorities na maaaring makatulong to solve that particular problem. Another is by utilizing the visible thinking routine. When students think visibly, they learn to think about what they think. This develops the metacognitive skills. Meta stands for beyond or on top of. Here are some advantages of establishing a visible thinking routine. 1. To enhance learning by guiding students' thinking. 2. To help the learner follow a wise course of action as she or he thinks through a problem, makes decisions, or attempts to understand a situation or text. What are these visible thinking routines or strategies? Let's discuss some of them. Chalk talk is a routine for silent brainstorming of ideas, questions, or problems. It is also a thinking routine which provides an opportunity for everyone to be given a chance to be heard. Thinking becomes visible and it encourages students to consider others' viewpoints. You may do this by posting a question and then ask them to share their ideas. You will focus on the idea here rather on the grammar or form. These may be utilized to solicit what the learners have in mind. For blended learning, you may ask the learners to share their answers through chat box during synchronous learning. Another visible thinking routine or strategy that we may employ is what makes you say that. This is an interpretation with justification routine. The routine involves the following questions. 1. What's going on? 2. 
What do you see that makes you say that? This routine helps the learners identify the basis for their thinking by asking them to elaborate on the thinking that lies behind their responses. This routine, when used regularly, helps foster evidential reasoning. This routine asks learners to share their interpretations backed with evidence so that others have an opportunity to consider multiple viewpoints and perspectives on a topic or idea. It empowers the entire learning community to examine the reasons and evidence behind the possible explanations to determine their worth. This strategy can be used across any learning area. It can particularly be used in examining objects, works of art, historical artifacts, literary and factual texts, scientific or mathematical observations. The third visible thinking routine or strategy is the headlines. Headlines is a routine for capturing the essence. This helps the learners to capture the core or heart of the matter. The headlines routine asks students to reflect and synthesize as they identify the essence or core of a situation or learning experience. This helps to build understanding of big ideas and core principles. Teachers send the message that taking notice of big ideas is critical to understanding. Documenting the group's headlines allows students to consider a topic from multiple angles. It provides the teacher with useful information that can be used to plan future instruction. Headline routine can also be used after a single episode of learning, such as in reading a story or book or watching a movie. In this context, students identify what was important or stood out to them about the experience. These can be written individually or with a partner. Fourth, among the visible thinking routine or strategy is the claim support question. It is a routine for exploring truth claims which follows the three steps. One is to make a claim. Making a claim about the topic, issue, or idea being explored. A claim is an explanation or interpretation of some aspect of what is being examined. Two is to identify support for your claim. What things do you see? feel or know that lend evidence to your claim and the third is raise a question related to your claim what make you doubt the claim what seems left hanging what isn't fully explained what further ideas or issues does your claim raise this routine helps learners to identify and probe claims. Identification of claims calls on students to look for patterns, spot generalizations, and identify assertions. This routine helps learners notice claims and hold them up to thoughtful scrutiny.
you may use this routine in exploring mathematical concepts or examining historical or scientific uh, topics or in reading persuasive texts. The next strategy is the color symbol image. It is a routine for distilling the essence of ideas non-verbally. So you will present a table with three columns. The first column will contain the color wherein the learners will be asked to choose a color that they think best represent the essence of the idea. For the second column, they will be asked to create a symbol that they think best represents the essence of the idea. And for the last column, they will sketch an image of uh, what they think best represents the essence of the idea. This routine is all about activating prior knowledge before a learning experience begins. It asks students to uncover initial thoughts, ideas, questions, and understandings about a topic and then connect these to new thinking about the topic after they have received some instruction. This can be used to enhance comprehension of reading, watching, or listening. It can also be used as a reflection on previous events of learning. And it is helpful if learners have some previous experience with highlighting text for important ideas, connections, or events. The sixth visible thinking strategy or routine is the 3 to one bridge. This is a routine for bringing out prior knowledge or reflection. So it is all about activating prior knowledge before a learning experience begins. It asks students to uncover initial thoughts, ideas, questions, and understandings about a topic and then connect these to new thinking about the topic after they have received some instruction. This routine works well when learners have some prior knowledge of topic or concept. It also helps develop understanding of a concept over time. So in the comparison of the previous two, uh, the knowledge gained after exposure. And then it also focused on the understanding and connecting one's thinking rather than pushing it toward a specific outcome. Based from the example, so they are asked to write down three things you found out, the two things that were really interesting, and one thing you would still like to know. Or on the other example, three facts I learned, two questions I still have in mind, or one opinion I now have. Another visible thinking strategy is the stoplight method or otherwise known as the traffic light method. The traffic light method is a type of formative assessment that can be used to check if the students feel they can apply a concept or idea. So how to do that? There should be a traffic light posted by the teacher and then the Pupils may answer red, yellow, or green. The teacher needs to explain to students that the green would mean that they are already doing this or easy to get there. Yellow means doable but will take some work. And red means they have much work to do to get there. So for in the example naman po, so the traffic light method, it shows that the red light 
we have to stop think small or don't eat the set of food at all for the yellow light naman po go slow or my weight can grow and then for for green eat more of these uh, meal every day so the next strategy is the star check question mark visible thinking routine which is for reflection this is usually found in the last page of the second quarter 504a modules wherein the learners are asked to assess their level of performance for every learning task weekly for example they will put star if they were able to do or perform the task without any difficulty or the task helped me in understanding the target content or lesson they will put check naman po if they were able to do or perform the task it was quite challenging but it still helped me in understanding the target content or lesson However, they are asked to put a question mark if they were not able to do or perform the task, meaning it was extremely difficult and they need additional enrichment activities to be able to do or perform the task given. The next strategy is the compass points, which is a routine for examining propositions. In this strategy, they will be using the four directions of the compass to express their answers. So for E, they will write, what excites you about this idea or proposition? Or what's the upside? For the W, what do you find worrisome about this idea or proposition? So what's the downside? For the N, what else do you need to know or find out about this proposition or idea? And for the S, what is your current stance or opinion on the idea or proposition? What should your next step be in your evaluation of this idea? Or what suggestions do you have at this point? So this routine enables group of learners to consider an idea or proposition from different angles. By exploring issues from multiple perspectives and identifying areas where more information is needed. Individuals can avoid rushing into judgment. So use uh, this routine to explore various sides and facets of a proposition or idea prior to taking a stand or expressing an opinion on it. And when a topic includes a dilemma or differing points of view. Second to the last visible thinking strategy is the see, think, wonder, which is a routine for exploring thoughts. It answers the three questions. What do you see? What do you think is going on? What does it make you wonder? This routine emphasizes the importance of observation as the basis for thinking and interpretation that follows the close looking of an image, object, video, excerpt of text, painting, photo, and others. The stimulus should be evocative and engaging. You may use this routine 
if you want the students to think carefully about why something looks the way it does or is the way it is. You may also use this at the beginning of a new unit to motivate student interest. You may also consider using with an interesting object near the end of a unit to encourage students to further apply their new knowledge and ideas. For the example, look at the artwork or object for a moment. Then you will ask the learners to observe what do they see. So you may use the symbol of the lens. And then what do you think about what you see? So they can express what they think. And then what do you wonder about? So you may use this symbol wherein they are sti still not able to express or utter the ideas they have in mind. We're down to the last visible thinking strategy or routine which is I used to think, now I think. Which is a routine for reflecting how and why our thinking has changed thoughts. This can be useful in consolidating new learning as students identify their new understandings, opinions, and beliefs. By examining and explaining how and why their thinking has changed, students develop their reasoning abilities and recognize cause and effect relationships. This routine is applicable whenever students' initial thoughts, opinions, beliefs, are likely to have changed as a result of instruction or experience. So as you can see from the illustration before, this is how he thinks and then it has been organized to how they think. So you can see the comparison of the improvement of thoughts. That ends my topic. Thank you for listening.